bedrock of all science is data. I sometimes say the most beautiful idea in science is generally worth nothing without the data, the observations, the experiments to back it up. Having a journal where you could submit a paper, have it properly reviewed, and then there was a record of what you had done, really clarified how science works. This is one of the most significant steps in the history of all of science. I think one of the most important things the Royal Society ever did, and it did it right at its beginning, was to invent the scientific journal with this journal, Philosophical Transactions, publishing articles describing the work. They could get it out there, they'd um, published it, they were owners of it, and there was a date on it, so they got priority. It's still very important now to have this Exactly, isn't that interesting? That's basically the same thing as we have now. All the thousands, tens of thousands of scientific journals, they publish regularly, they're dated, they're peer-reviewed, it's all exactly the same model. When you're competing for a result, you want to be the one that got it first, and that means get it in the journal first. So it still holds a lot of importance in terms of motivation to getting out good, robust and results And it's exactly fast. the same in my field too. with WW, with looking at the jets. WW, you would have to say the same diagram as the first. If we're looking for this WW process, then we get a massive background from these top Particle physics areas. in particular, we're very, very stringent when we analyse our data about whether we say we've discovered something. And it means that we really want to be totally sure that what we're saying is, is reliable. I work on the Atlas experiment which already has more than 3,000 people. Um, and then there's another experiment called the CMS experiment on the LHC Collider, also with many thousands of people. And we are essentially doing the same physics programme. And that is done on purpose. It's because if one of us is to make a, a claim of something really extraordinary, we need, it needs to be confirmed by the other experiment. And also it helps a little bit with friendly competition. You, you, you sort of don't drag your feet so much when you know that there's somebody across the ring who's also doing things mm -hmm. as quickly as, as you are. So Emily, this is the minutes of the Council of the Royal Society recording when Philosophical Transactions was established. So okay. ordered that the Philosophical Transactions, that's the journal, to be composed by Mr Oldenburg. The secretary of the Royal Society, Henry Oldenburg, played a key role. I suspect that he thought inventing the journal might reduce his workload to some extent. So instead of acting as the sort of spider in the middle of the web connecting everybody, it could be dealt with by a regular publication of a journal where the observations and data were set out. Printed the first Monday of every month, so a very regular mm -hmm. publication. Yeah, it is. Um, if there's sufficient matter for it. <laughs> so if he didn't have it, then he w wouldn't publish it. And that the track be licensed by the Council of the Society. In other words, it's acceptable for publication. Mm -hmm. mm. What's in there would be peer review. That was the origin, really, yeah. of peer review. What peer review can do is just eliminate the rubbish. Um, but if you're going for a high-profile journal, then a peer reviewer will be making judgments as to how interesting it is. And sometimes um, they, they don't see that it's interesting, even if the science is quite good. So the fact we've got a range of journals does mean that research does get out there eventually, as long as it's sound. In particle physics, we have this rule that we go by that if we want to make a discovery, there's what we call a five sigma um, significance on it. So five sigma is, is making it really safe before we go ahead and we publish it. Just coming back a little bit to how it's done in your field, so take, for example, your Nobel Prize winning work. You must have really wanted to be sure that it was correct before you announced it. So how many times did you do, how many different ways did you do the measurement before you were convinced? The first observations were extremely exciting, but they were insufficient for us to be sure it was right. So for the succeeding months after that, we were doing all sorts of further experiments that ended up with a very solid result. So when we published it, we were pretty certain that we were right. So that's your five sigma, in your, your personal it's, five It's my personal five sigma. So this is the first um, Philosophical Transactions, volume one. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. 
So this is the very first pages of the very first journal. It was the beginning of peer review because council had to look at it, but it took a while for the whole process to get in place. Philosophical transactions, undertaking studies and labours Labors. of the ingenious in many considerable parts of the world. It's great language anyway. <laughs> An account of the improvement of optic glasses at Rome. Glass. A real distinction, I think, between the sort of thing you're doing and what certainly my lab's doing is that once we've published it, um, people are less likely to say, well, that's the end of the story than they are with you. I mean, if you're, if, you know, like when those Higgs boson papers came out, that was essentially established. In our case, we'll do everything we can within the lab, then other people will take that idea and test it and poke it and do other sorts of experiments in their system, approach it in a different way. So the peer reviewing occurs continuously after publication, perhaps, in a, in a more extended way than maybe in your field. We're going through a revolution now in how we publish and we will see different ways of publishing and open access and electronic publishing and all of these things are interesting and will change the way that we do things but fundamentally it's based on the principles that we use to establish philosophical transactions the journal invented by the Royal Society in 1665.